The lens naming system. It's complicated, but I've decided to break it down for you guys. The first half of this video is going to be just the basics of the lens system, and the second part of the video is just for Canon lenses. That's because that's what I've been researching on, so let's get it started. The lens length, in our case 10 to 45 millimeter. The smaller that number, that 10 millimeter, the closer your lens is to your sensor and the wider your view is. And the further it is, the narrower the view and the more zoom you get out of the camera. There are also prime lenses that only have the 45 millimeter and that's all it is. You cannot zoom in or out with the camera, you have to physically walk towards your subject or away from your subject. And I'm not going to get into deeper with that, this is just the basics. There are also crop factors to think about. In my case, okay, if you buy a Canon 5D Mark II, the crop factor is 1. There, there is no crop factor because you have a full frame, full sized sensor. What does that mean when you have a not a full size sensor, a smaller sensor, just like in the 60D or the 70D or the XSI? That means you have a crop factor of 1.6. So our 10 to 45 millimeter camera, you have to multiply that by 1.6. So 10 times 1.6 and 45 times 1.6. And that is the effective range that you get. There are also Micro Four Thirds camera that I'm thinking of getting as well that have a crop factor of two. So that means that 10 millimeter shortest range is actually gonna be a 20 millimeter and the 45 is gonna be 90. <laughs> the aperture, that is the f2.8 to 4.0. What does that mean? What is aperture? Aperture is how wide the circle is to let the light into your camera. And the smaller the aperture number, so f2.8 or f1.8, the bigger the hole is. And the larger the number, the smaller the hole. What does that mean? Well, if you want to take pictures of kids running around inside a house, which is generally not well lit compared to outside on a sunny day, an f4.0 lens is it's going to be really blurry. You're going to have to pump up the ISO, but it's going to be really, really blurry. So what you want to capture those kids running around is a bigger hole to let more light in. Another note on the f-stop or the aperture, as you can see, there's a range 2.8 to 4.0. Let's take a look at our imaginary lens here. The f2.8 is how big the aperture is at 10 millimeter and the f4.0 is how big it is at 45 millimeters. So whenever you zoom in, <laughs> whenever you zoom in the lens, the, the circle gets smaller. There are cameras that you can get that the circle stays the same size, but that is, those are expensive lenses. And this is, again, this is just for the basics. Okay, now we're transitioning more from general camera lenses, more to Canon stuff, IS. Or if you have a Nikon camera, it's a, it's a different lettering. Image stabilization, pretty much that, that's what it means. I think, I think Nikon has VR. Anyway, image stabilization is on the lens itself. So that means the lens itself moves. So you're taking a picture and it's a little bit shaky and your hands sh is shaking a little bit. Well, that lens moves to compensate for the shake so that you can get a crisp photo. It's not blurry. This is useful, especially if you have a zoom lens and you're not using a tripod or a monopod because it's gonna shake if you have a, you know, zoom lens. There are also different ways of image stabilization. One of them is chip built. So the actual chip inside the camera, I, I'm sure this is, <laughs> this is in the Olympus Pen EP3, the actual chip moves to compensate for your movement. So none of their lenses have image stabilization. There's also a third way of image stabilization and that is digital. So the software inside your camera actually compensates for your shaking. Now we're on the Canon part, EFS. What does that mean? Well, there's two different kinds of cameras, two different kinds of lenses the Canon sells, the EF and the EFS. The EF works with 
pretty much all the cameras that they have, the, the new ones. And the EFS works only with cameras with a white square on the camera itself. Right right where you put the lens, there should be a white square and a red dot. If it has a white square, that o that's only an EFS that, that can take an EFS and an EF lens, and if it's only got a red dot, it can only take an EF lens. What does this mean? Well, generally, the more expensive high-end cameras that Canon has is only EF. They don't, they don't take the EF lenses, EFS lenses. So, if you want to upgrade from your super basic DSLR to something a lot better, or, well, a lot more professional, you need you should think about investing on EF lenses only. All right, now we're reaching the very end, almost to the end, USM. What is this? This is for autofocusing. So most cameras right now, most lenses that Canon sells has the USM because everyone loves autofocus. And right at the very end is this dash two. <laughs> so that means Mark II. That is, this is the second version of this lens. So Canon made a lens, and years later they figured, you know what, this is so popular, this is so awesome, let's make a second version of this lens. All right, YouTube, well, thanks for watching the video. I hope this helps you guys a lot with your research. And if any of you have comments of anything I got wrong, put them down below, or if you make a video response, I'll be sure to highlight it somewhere in this video. Thanks.